on now, I think, is it? In joy, in hope, in gratitude, we gather, gather together. From the whole winds of earth, from our separate faiths, from lives of pain and joy, from all of peace, we gather. 
We gather in anticipation of great things, of beauty, depth, meaning, and inspiration. Let us gather in openness, the ever surprising, the ever unpredictable, the ever wonder making movements of the Spirit. Into this place we come to witness to the whisper that has been stirred through the ages. We come now to witness to the hope of life lived in response to the whispers of God. Here we gather in gratitude, in hope, in joy. Let us celebrate. Will you please rise in body and spirit as we join in with the gathering song, God the Spirit, God the Guardian. to the presence of your Holy Spirit, and may we rejoice in all that is good in your eternal name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. On behalf of Founders Metropolitan Community Church, I want to welcome every one of you to this wonderful celebration this afternoon as we gather to 
uh, participate in the rite of ordination for Tori Topshun, and uh, it's going to be a great day. I'm so thrilled uh, with his growth and his ministry over the years, and now we look forward to a future as an ordained clergy person of the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches. What a day, and thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. Our word from the scriptures comes from Leviticus 8, 1 to 12. God spoke to Moses. He said, take Aaron and with him his sons, the garments, the anointing oil, give you a program. the bowl for the absolution offering, the two rams, and the basket of unraised bread. Gather the entire congregation at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So Moses did just as God commanded him, and the congregation gathered at the entrance of the tent of meaning. Moses then addressed the congregation, this is what God has commanded to be done. Moses brought Aaron and his sons forward, washed them with water. He put the tunic on Aaron and tied it around him with a sash. Then he put the robe on him and placed the ephod on him. He fastened the ephod with a woven belt, making it snug. He put the breast piece on him and put the urim and the thummim in the pouch of the breast piece. He placed the turban on his head with the gold plate fixed to the front of it, the holy crown, just as God had commanded Moses. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the dwelling and everything that was in it, consecrating them. He sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times, anointing the altar and all its utensils, the wash basin and its stand, consecrating them. He poured out the anointing oil on Aaron's head, anointing him and thus consecrating him. Hear what the word says to us. Be to God. Amen. Tori had asked for me to uh, have a couple of words, so words of community. And the first thing that came to my mind was almost maybe a roast. And I don't want to do that to Tori today. He's in enough stress the way it is. <laughs> but a story was recalled from about four years ago when Tori was just beginning to think about that journey of ministry. And my tradition is Baptist, so I promise I will not go into a Baptist monologue, so I give you some assurance there. <laughs> That's for our Baptists in the group. But I do want to share a short story, and it really does illustrate for all of us that have gone into ministry. And ministry is not just for the people that are in the pulpit that are called uh, full-time within the church, that we are a priesthood of believers. We are a community of saints, every one of us. And when Troy was, Troy was talking to me about ministry, and he said, you know, I just don't know that I'm going to be called. I just don't know that I'm going to be called. And uh, I said, you know, sometimes God puts peas and carrots on our plate, and sometimes we just don't know either what to do with them or we just don't want them. Or as me as a little kid growing up, I just kind of pushed them to the side or mixed them up to look like I'd actually touched them. <laughs> so as... Tory continued in his journey of ministry, or of concerning, of actually contemplating if he was that call to ministry. We kept going back to that ministry is much like those peas and carrots, that God will place those gifts on our plate, whether we like them or not. God has called us to a, a, to a life of ministry, a life of service. So Tory, may you have a lifelong of enjoying your peas and carrots. <laughs> Once in a while, there are causes for great celebration, and this definitely is one of them. 
And we at MCC San Diego had the privilege of getting to know Tori while he did his internship for his requirements for seminary and also for MCC moving him closer to full-time ministry. And it was a one-year internship. And I want to say God bless you, Tori, for the many miles you drove back and forth and back and forth. I know coming up here and going back, it is not always easy. Right, Reverend Houston? <laughs> And it's amazing that you came rain or shine, easy traffic and tough traffic, ready to go, and always arrived with a good attitude. I first met Tori in June of 2011 when I came to this church, Founders MCC, for an MCC Stewardship Summit. Tori was in charge of the food, and he definitely has the gift of hospitality, and it certainly was impressive, and I will also add, delicious. Tori asked me to share some advice with him today, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to celebrate with all of you here today, and especially you, Tori. So here goes. Being called into full-time ministry is not an easy task. Just ask the first three rows. Like swimming in the beautiful ocean, there are rip currents. And sometimes the waters are dangerous, and there are risks to being in ministry. Tori, I know that you're going into this with your eyes wide open, and I want to share some of my experience with you with the help of Deborah Kesey. Remember, you asked for this. <laughs> Number one, there is the risk that you will fall in love with the people you serve. And if you don't think that's risky, think again. Loving others makes us vulnerable. It takes us out of the safety of our own isolation, and it opens up the possibility and the probability that our lives will be impacted by them and by what happens in their lives. You're being asked to walk with them through some of the most intimate moments of their lives, the joys of marriage, as well as the struggle to stay married the birth of children, as well as the difficulties of having and raising and even losing those children, the pain of loss and the joy of discovery. As you're in community with them, when they hurt, you will hurt. When they struggle, you will struggle. And when they rejoice, you will rejoice. And that's risky business. And I can still remember being called from a vacation that I was on over New Year's Day vacation in Colorado Springs. And I was called to go to the hospital because a board member of our church at Pikes Peak MCC was going to pull the plug on the life support of her partner of 25 years. I knew it wouldn't be easy. I wasn't trained what to say in moments like this. But I knew I had to go and be with her because I was her pastor. Tori, if you truly try to live out the love of Christ, you love them, no matter what, even when they're seemingly unlovable <laughs> or angry or hurt or disappointed. And sometimes it'll be targeted at you. Yes, dangerous waters but powerful waters, waters that leave you humbled and also strengthened. Number two, another risk. If you continue in ministry, there is the risk and a strong risk that your faith will not remain the same. Your comfortable faith, nurtured in childhood, solidified in seminary, that faith will be challenged and stretched and pulled in new and sometimes frightening ways. And as you know from your experience, sometimes the easy answers aren't so easy in real life. From the simplest questions asked by a child, to the faithful person whose prayers go unanswered, to suffering that we don't understand, your faith will be challenged and changed. And there will be times when you're going through your own time of wilderness or your own time of doubt. And many times it's extremely humbling to stand and worship before the gathered faithful and realize that looking, looking out, there's so much faith and there's so much life experience before you that you wonder if it's possible that you even have words of wisdom to offer these faithful people. If you venture into these dangerous waters, you risk running into questions that have no simple and sometimes even adequate answers, and your faith will be changed, but it'll be deepened, and it'll be honest, 
and it will be real. Yes. Another one, perhaps one of the most frightening things about entering these waters of ordained ministry is that by doing so, you are no longer in control. Right. Woo! <laughs> if you're a person who likes to know where you're going and what's going to happen when you get there, well, as you continue on this journey, you can toss that out the window. You can forget that. You may find yourself in places you'd never dreamed, Tori, doing things you never thought possible. You may find yourself in places you thought you'd never want to go, and you'll discover that's exactly where you needed to be. And the amazing thing is, God will be there with you, just as God promised. We don't know where God is leading, but the journey is always well worth it. And finally, when you wade into these waters, you're offering yourself in true servant ministry. We're reminded that ultimately ministry is not about us. It's not about the size of our church. It's not about our salary. It's not about where we serve or the recognition that we receive. Ministry is about God. It's about loving and serving those around us. It's about finding new and creative ways of telling the story of God's inclusive love for all people. It's about opening our hearts and the hearts of others to the infinite possibilities found in relationship with God. And it's about deepening the faith of those for whom this is not a new story. And it's about giving our lives to help transform the world one life at a time as you work on transforming yourself. It's about using your gifts, Tori, gifts of mercy and forgiveness and compassion and love and hope. It's about leading with integrity. So continue to love. Always come back to your calling. We had that conversation in my office many times. Always come back to your calling when things get tough and people are people. Remember who called you and that it's a sacred calling and no one can take that away from you. So welcome, Tori. Welcome to the dangerous, exciting, risky, life-changing, life-giving waters of ministry. And I rejoice that you are willing to take that risk. Remember the words Jesus spoke to his disciples and speaks to you today. Take heart. Do not be afraid, for I am with you always. Amen. Stephen and uh, I or the two bookends to the book, <laughs> Dan, that just spoke. Uh, what I asked Tori, I said, Tori, how long do you want us to take? He said, whatever y'all want to do. I thought, dangerous. <laughs> turn, turn three preachers loose here. And dangerous. I want to tell you today how thrilled I am that you've invited me to be a part of this ordination service. Tori, you're the first Armenian clergy in our denomination, and I'm very thrilled. Would you all give him a great big hand? I want to tell you this. <laughs> Tori is very proud of his Armenian background, and I'm proud of it too for him. Tori, I just have three comments I want to make. Number one, Jesus said, feed my sheep, not beat my sheep, <laughs> not force my sheep, amen, but feed my sheep. And I want to tell you that's what God calls on you to do today. When you meet that congregation that Dan talked about, absolutely. I often tell people, my pastor told me when I was a teenager, he said, one of the things you'll love about the first church you pastor is you will build it up. God will use you to build it up around yourself, around your personality. 
And that was some of the best, that was some of the best preaching I ever got from a pastor. Because the longer I stayed in Metropolitan Community Church, the more in love I fell. And I thank God today that we continue to feed God's sheep. Number two, stay hungry for the ministry. Now, these are my three things. Sheep, staying hungry for the ministry. And I want to tell you something. Stephen mentioned it doesn't matter which church we go to first or how many people are in it. We learn from that. And people are hungry to hear a minister who's hungry for the ministry. And what I mean by that, when I founded Metropolitan Community Church, you know, I would have gone hungry to do what I've been able to do. And once you take that attitude, God doesn't let you go hungry normally. When you have that hunger for ministry, you'll see. The third thing for you is pray without ceasing. I have to do it all the time. Oh God, another driver's ran out in front of me. <laughs> it's prayer, amen? Oh Lord, what are we going to do here? Just pray without ceasing. I can tell you, after my, you know, this is my 62nd year from the time I started preaching, and I can tell you it's worth every bit of it. So keep it up, and God bless you this morning. Amen.
My name is Reverend Nancy Wilson, and I'm proud to be the moderator of Metropolitan Community Churches Worldwide. Reverend Tory, it's so great to address you that way, and I'm so proud of you for your commitment and dedication in pursuing ministry in Metropolitan Community Churches. I'm aware, as you've pointed out, that you are the first person from an Armenian Orthodox background to be ordained in Metropolitan Community Churches. Years ago, decades ago, when I worked with the U.S. National Council of Churches. Truthfully, the Armenian Orthodox were among the most friendly Orthodox at the Council and uh, welcomed us quite warmly. So I know there's something special about being Armenian Orthodox and the great witness that you bring. Tori, I'm so thrilled at the many ways in which you have served your local churches and metropolitan community churches globally through our Moderator Circle events, and I'm just proud of you and all that you have to offer. I know that God will do great things through you and your ministry, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for saying yes to ministry in MCC. I know that great things are happening and going to happen through your ministry. God bless you. To the saints, the faithful warriors who've done battle on their knees in the spirit, raging war. from God our Savior. Grace be unto you. We give thanks for your labor. We give thanks for God for victory.
individuals to come forward and to stand with Tori. Tori, would you come up? Or would your father Thomas, your godmother Chris, Can you hear me now? <laughs> Amen, Alejandro. And uh, Dan, would you come up at this time? Oh, you're already here. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Metropolitan Community Churches recognize that God calls the whole church and every member to, to participate in it and to extend the ministry of Jesus Christ by proclaiming the acts of God who has called us to freedom. All members of the church are called as ordained ministers of Christ in the church and in the world. Ordination is the right by which metropolitan community churches legally recognizes and authorizes those members who God has called to the professional ministry of this church by prayer and laying on of hands. The task of professional ministry is to encourage the ministry of the church's members by nourishing faith, calling forth gifts, and equipping people for service to the world. There is someone here who has been called to take the mantle of servant leadership in fulfillment of this task. Tori has asked key individuals, amen, Dan, He's asked these key individuals to step forward and to present him before this congregation of God. And Tori, if you would turn around, please, and face this congregation. Amen. <laughs> and everyone else, please. Having been called by God to professional ministry through metropolitan community churches, Tori Vahan Topshin has professed and demonstrated a call to be a professional Christian minister. Tori has completed all of the requirements for ordination, been examined by a gathering of colleagues, and has been found ready to serve among the people of God as a spiritual leader. Therefore, on behalf of those who stand here before you, with Tori and Founders Metropolitan Community Church Los Angeles, we are pleased to present Tori Vahan Topshin for ordination into the ministry of Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you two may return to your seats if you wish to. <laughs> Tori, hear these words from Jesus Christ to the first disciples. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles dominate them, and their great leaders exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be the servant, and whoever shall be first among you must be willing to be last. Tory, by standing here before God and these people, you offer yourselves to the service of ordained ministry of the Metropolitan Community Churches and commit yourself to servant leadership lived in covenant with its leaders and people. Before God and these representatives of Metropolitan Community Church, our allies, families, and friends, we asked you, are you persuaded that God called you to be or an ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ? And are you ready to enter this ministry and to serve faithfully in it? I am with the help of God. Do you, with the church throughout the world, hear the word <clears throat> of God in Hebrew and Christian testimonies? And do you accept the word of God as the rule for Christian faith and practice? I do, through the grace of God. Do you promise to be diligent in your private prayers and in reading the scriptures, as well as in public duties of your office? I do, through the grace of God. 
Will you be zealous in maintaining both the truth of the gospel and the peace of the church, always speaking the truth in love? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you be faithful in preaching and teaching the gospel and administering the sacraments and rites of the church and extending pastoral care and leadership? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you keep silent all confidence is shared with you? I will, relying on God's grace. Will you seek to regard all people with equal love and concern and undertake to minister impartially to the needs of all? I will, relying on God's grace. Do you accept the faith and order of the metropolitan community churches? And will you, as an ordained minister, reach out ecumenically towards all who are in Christ and show Christian love to people of other faiths and people who have no faith? I do, and I will, relying on God's grace. Do you, all of you here today, the representatives of metropolitan community churches, our allies, family, and friends, faithfully promise Tory with love and support, allowing him to be led by example and to be carry and to carry out the vision, mission, and core values of metropolitan community churches worldwide, and all that God has set forth, not only within this congregation, but wherever God places Tory to foster and provide his time, gifts, and talents so that God's good news might be revealed to the world. If so, please respond by saying, we do. We do. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The laying on of hands is a symbolic act whereby the church in every age recognizes the faithful women and men who God has placed the minister and to ask the Holy Spirit to confer upon them gifts for ordained ministry. I now invite forward those who are here present, regardless of your faith tradition, and or ordained ministers and clergy within our faith community. And what we mean by that, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Not just the Metropolitan Community Church, but to all of those clergy who are here, would you come up and join me in laying hands on our brother Tory today? Love alone. I will. 
God, in wisdom you govern all things. From the beginning you have chosen faithful people to serve you in ministry and to equip all your people for the work of ministry and for the building up of the body of Christ. Now bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit your servant Tory, whom we, in your name and obedience to your will, ordain to the ministry of the church. Bestow on Tory the power of your Holy Spirit confirming what we do. Enable him to nourish your people in the faith of the gospel. Fill his speech with truth and his life with grace. Increase his faith in you. Strengthen him in the days of trouble. Prosper his words and works so that your name might be glorified and your truth exalted. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Sovereign. Amen. 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 Oh, you may return to your seats, Tori. Would you stand, please? And I'll let... Yeah. Those accept giving gifts now. They may be seated. We'll. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. And by the authority granted to me as an ordained minister of Metropolitan Community Churches, I hereby declare that you are ordained into the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> On behalf of the ministry within this congregation, Jane and Cormel present you with your Albin censure. Receive this Albin Center as a sign of the pure covenant that exists between you, God, and the community. And always wear this with honor and humility.
Reverend Haleandro, do you have, yeah. Mm -hmm. He is presenting you with two overlay stoles. You're, as you receive these stoles from ICM, and I want to pronounce this right without murdering it, <laughs> Fedora? Fundadora. <laughs> okay. Fundadora, something you wear. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> and welcomes you to the ministry. Know that one of these stoles has been specifically uh, made for you. Oh, I jumped ahead, didn't I? I'm sorry, it's all right, I'll get to y'all next. <laughs> well, or do you, do you want to just. Okay, great. I'm sorry. I've jumped the gun, haven't I? All right, this is from the board of directors of the congregation here, founders of Metropolitan Community Church, Don and Jennifer. They're going to present you with your chasuble and underlay stole. Receive this chasuble and underlay stole as a sign of your leadership to God, the community, and to yourself as you embark on a lifetime journey of service to the world around you. And now Jane, I'm sorry, Don, back again, <laughs> and I've still got the wrong one. <laughs> Lost my place here. Yes, I'll have to you clear it up. Lynn and Patty, they will present you with your chalice and patent. As you receive this, know that each time you celebrate at God's table, you will continue to nourish all of God's children who gather along with you with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Amen. Your godmother, Chris, has two Bibles. <laughs> if you'll come up here for a second. As she presents these two Bibles, receive the first which was given to you by her when you were received in the covenant of God through holy baptism 53 years ago. And the second as a part of your tools to teach and preach God's Word through the Hebrew and Christian Scriptures. <laughs> Amen. Your father, Thomas, presents you again with this cross. Rece receive this cross which was handcrafted by your grandfather who first placed it around your neck at his baptism 86 years ago. Your father then took it off from around his neck and placed it around yours for the first time at your baptism 53 years ago. As he places it again around your neck, let this be affirmation of your love to God and your call to ministry. Thank his father for giving him this place to do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Reverend Elder Don Eastman, anoint your oil, your forehead, eyes, lips, hands, feet, and heart. May this all be a tangible representation of the divine works of the Creator God, the loving acts of Jesus Christ, and the sustaining grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, for the last time, I want to present you with the newest ordained clergy in the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches. If you would welcome him at this time.
Please join me in prayer. You have forgotten more than we will ever think of. You have given more than we will ever do. You have shattered the cold stones encasing our hearts so you could write your name on them. Redeemer of all, we praise you. You plant the seed of grace and hope deep within us, watering them with your love. You call us to follow so we may join in serving the broken of our world. Jesus of the tears, we praise you. You journey with us, leading us closer to the cross. You center us on the one we would follow so we can see Jesus clearly. You point to your watch so we know the hour for faithfulness has come. Generous spirit, we praise you. God in community, holy in one, we open our mouths to sing your praises as we sing a prayer your son had taught us. disciples. If we want God to create new hearts within us, we must speak of the old ways in which we continue to live. If we seek God's mercy, we must confess all that keeps us from living as God's children. So in a brief moment of silence, let us join together as we come to the one who will forgive us. Would you please join me in the community prayer of confession? In the silence and in the depths of our hidden souls, come to us and make us whole, steadfast love. Write grace upon our hearts so we might be more forgiving people. Mercy in our hearts so we might become more welcoming people. Write hospitality on your hearts so we might become more like Jesus. Our Lord and Savior, who came for all people, even us. As we speak our assurance of forgiveness, a new heart and a generous spirit, a fresh start, these are the gifts that God has given to us. Through Christ we are cleansed, through Christ we are healed. Through Christ, we will become new people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, with the angels and the saints, we join in this hymn of praise, singing. Santos. It was on that night that Jesus was to be taken from us. He gathered his disciples and all those who were present. Taking the bread from the table, he blessed it, broke it, and said, this is my body broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Eat this, and each time you do so, remember me. And likewise, following the meal, he took a cup from the table. Some say it was the cup of Elijah to be touched by no one but the Messiah. But Jesus took the cup anyway and he blessed it and he said, this cup of salvation, this is the body of my blood and the essence poured out for you for the forgiveness and to, this, and to seal the new and eternal covenant. So each time you drink of this, drink it often and as you do, remember me. Please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, I ask that you provide these gifts of the bread and the cup for us yes. so that we might taste your grace and your hope. Plant the seed of the Spirit deep within our hidden hearts so we may serve without expecting recognition. So our generous spirit might ease the poverty of the world so the good news we have heard may be proclaimed to all that we meet. Then at last, when all people are free, when all brokenness is made whole, when all creation is once more new, we will gather around your table of joy, singing your joy forever and ever. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Amen. Here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church, just like all MCCs throughout the world, we offer what we call an open communion or an open table. And what that means is that you don't need to be a member of this church or any church for that matter or any faith tradition. All are welcomed to come to this table as God has intended. In just a few moments, the ushers will guide you to one of the stations across the front where it is our tradition to take the host or the element, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice and place it upon your tongue. Or if you prefer, you may take and dip yourself. Traditionally, once you have been served, we offer a brief prayer of blessing. And as we are gathered today, we will do the same. If you do not wish to receive communion today, you're invited to stay right where you are and have that time and reflect with God. Because there's no worries. As we say here in this particular congregation, God will find you right where you are. Amen. So as we finish preparing this table, I'd like to invite those acolytes, the ushers and the servers to please join us, to please join us, and for all of you who feel called to do, to come just as you are. Hear the Spirit Come just as you are Come and see Come receive Come and live For
This is truly a day of joy and celebration. <clears throat> this is also a day to express gratitude as well. I am extremely grateful to have and have been blessed by so many people in my life. Each and every one who is here today physically and also virtually. Each has touched a place in my life in such a special way and I am forever grateful. But there are a few that I need to publicly acknowledge this day. First and foremost, I have been blessed by two wonderful parents. My mother, who is with the angels, looking down upon us on this day. <clears throat> and my dad, Thomas, who sits here with us this afternoon has always told me I've been the rock of his life, but it's really been him who's been the rock of mine. Thank you for being there from the beginning. I'm also very blessed to have a wonderful godmother who is here, Chris. We joke so often that I am the only godson and the only godchild, which is true, but you've always been there and I am truly grateful. I need to acknowledge another few friends of mine, one who is not here today, my soulmate Rich, who's clear across the United States in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who has been through this with me for the past 25 years or so, and has always been that virtual and that soulmate in my life. And a new friend in my life, Lee, what can I say, we've been through it good, bad, and indifference over the last few years, and we'll always be there for one another. And then there, there are some of the cheerleaders in my life. One who's not able to be with us and sends her greetings is Rabbi Denise Eger from Kolomi. <clears throat> she has been that inspiration and has taught me more about Hebrew history and Judaism than anybody has ever taught me in all my years of seminary. Not that I didn't have good seminary instructors in that area, but she has been the utmost. Reverend Dan, what can I say? We've been through it all together. But you have given me the horizon. You sent me out into the community when I was in San Diego and taught me what it was to be a representation of the church, not only to the church, but to the community. And Reverend Alex, We laugh, we cry. We have done a lot through the years that we've known each other. And I am grateful that I get to work with you each and every day at this congregation. Thank you. And I'm also truly grateful for a few others in my life. 
The one who's standing here, Reverend Steve Swafford. You've been that friend, that colleague, and someone who's been the life coach in my life. And as you said earlier, you taught me to say yes when God placed that dinner plate in front of me with the juicy entree along with the side selection of those peas and carrots. <laughs> but you taught me when to recognize when it was time to stop pushing those peas and carrots off the plate and knowing when it was the right time to say yes to God's call. And someone else who is unable to be with us this afternoon is someone who I call my pastor, my mentor, my colleague, and most of all, my friend, Reverend Dr. Neil Cazares Thomas. Neil, I know you're with us, and you're with us virtually today, but you are the one who said to me for the very first time, I believe in you from the very start. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being that person who's always believed in me, but at the same time taught me to believe in myself. And you've taught me so many valuable lessons, and you will always be in my heart forever. And lastly, and to say not the least, is Reverend Troy. Who had ever thought that 19 years ago, when Chris Glauser and Bob Blodwick introduced me for the very first time when we were at Pasadena Press, that you'd be here officiating and confirming this beautiful occasion. Troy, I have been so very blessed to call you my spiritual hero and my patron saint in life. You've always told me to follow my dreams and to do it within the heart and that God will always be there to carry them through. Yes. So I'm so forever grateful. Thank you. <clears throat> and for each and every one that are here, you have all have touched my life in one way or another through the years. <clears throat> Too many to can name and all that, but please know that you all have been there and you all continue to be in my heart. So as we go out into the world, may God's gracious mercy and protection be given to each and every one of us. And the blessing of God, as we know, is the Creator, the Savior, and the Holy Spirit. May it be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Will you please rise as you are able for the song of sending. Amen.